Hello, and welcome to Paper Plays, Julie Kay. Welcome, crafty friends, and thank you so much for stopping by and checking out my latest video. Today, I'm continuing on my journey of creating as many Christmas trees as I can this holiday season using items in my stash. This is the 15th and final video in this series. I do have a playlist available along with links in the description box below if you are interested in checking out the other episodes available on decorating paper mache cones. Today's episode focuses on a fun winter style tree created with a shabby style eyelash trim that I had in my stash. For today's episode, I am again starting off with a 17 inch tree, paper mache tree that I have already painted in the color plaster. Um, again, it's the Waverly brand chalk paint. And also just a little note that I think today's episode is gonna be the last episode, not because I'm not without more ideas or and other supplies in my stash I'd really like to use up, but this is pretty much the last um, paper mache cone that I have in my stash. I do have a couple more really of the smaller ones that came from my mom from crochet trim, but I have those two pegged. My husband and I, a while back, um, several years ago, we went to Nome, Alaska, and we picked up sea glass off of the the sea, um, the beach there. And I really wanna make a couple of Christmas trees with the sea glass, but my husband also wants to make one with me. So if I do get an opportunity to share that um, final tree with you guys, I will show you. Um, I just had to find a day when he's willing to sit down in the craft room with me to create them. I have green sea glass, and then I'm hoping I have enough white, because I thought that would be a really pretty tree. Um, so if I do get those episodes or the trees done, it will just be kind of a share, um, project share video versus a tutorial, because I think, um, like I said, he wants to do a tree with me and decorate one just because we picked up the sea glass together. So I'm hoping that we get an opportunity to do that this year. We've talked about doing something with the sea glass and I told him I thought it would be fun to create trees. So I will share that video and as a project share if I do get that done. But otherwise this is the last tree that I have. Again, I had some other supplies set aside that I really wanted to to create with, but um, maybe I'll find a few more trees between now and next year and I'll do add on a couple more to this series next year. So um, again, this will be the last episode in the series for right now, um, or maybe I'll just say to be continued. Um, so again, the 17 inch tree for today's supply. I also have shown this before in my series. It was a little wood piece with a hole in the bottom that I put um, beads around, pearl string around, and I still had this left over. I didn't use it on one of the other trees that I was maybe thinking about using it, so I think I'm gonna use it up on the top of this tree and glue it on for my tree topper. And then today's trim that I'm gonna be using is I'm gonna just be using just a little bit of this trim. It comes from Hobby Lobby. I did buy it, um, reduced 75% off, but it's from the wedding section. It's some gorgeous little rosette trim with beads. I thought this would be fun to put at the base of my tree this time around. The last thing I wanna use on this tree or for trim is this gorgeous trim. I'm just calling it kind of an eyelash type trim. It is like a little bit bigger piece of trim that has a whole bunch of eyelash trim sewn into it. I did pick this up at Hobby Lobby quite a while ago, several years ago. And I also think I have it in red. I have a little bit of that maybe left in my stash somewhere. Um, but I thought this would just be gorgeous to put on my tree. And I think today's episode, um, if you have this style of trim, this is a really easy um, last minute gift also for this style trim because um, I'm just going to layer it up all the way up. So that, again, this is another really quick and simple one that once you get going, you really don't have to think about 
doing. So if you find the right trim, it's always fun to create these trees because you can just repeat it all the way up with minimal thinking and um, it can look really elegant. So I'm looking forward to seeing what the overall effect of this tree is. So to start with, I am just going to glue this around twice on the bottom. And again, for today's episode, I think hot glue is going to be my choice of glue for this one. So I have the first little layer on and then I'm going to do one more underneath it and then I'm going to start working on the other part. So that's what it looks like with, so this is what it looks like with both layers glued down. I think that's a really pretty little base layer to put down. So now we're going to go ahead and start gluing down the other trim. So now we're going to start gluing down this other trim and I don't think I need to have a bottom dangle because this is going to dangle down pretty far. We probably won't even see the base, but I always like to have a nice base underneath it just in case um, you do happen to see it. So again, I'm just going to layer it down one section at a time, working my way up and using hot glue for this one. What I'm trying to do is I am trying to line up the base of this trim right here, this spot with the base or the bottom right here is what I'm trying to do just to make it kind of go on evenly all the way around. I think the one nice thing about this trim is that it's going to be very forgiving as far as being able to tell where it starts and ends. You're not really going to be able to see the seams, I don't think, once you get all of the, the layers up. Sorry about that. My little camera strap just fell down. So hopefully that wasn't too annoying. I'm just trying to see where I need to cut it off for the end here. And I might slightly go over, so just to make sure, I'm not sure. It's been a while since I've worked with this trim. I'm not sure if it's going to, to fray at all. So we'll just cut just slightly over. Get the last little bit glued down here. So that's what the first layer looks like. I really like that. That's going to be so pretty, I think, when this is done. I think it's going to look very wintry. 
Hopefully that's a word, wintry. I'm not even sure. Now I need to decide, I guess, if... And I think I can just layer this right on top where this base ends right here. I'm just going to glue this base part right there. So um, that's how I'm gonna glue down my second layer and keep on working. I could leave a little bit of space if I wanted to, but I want it nice and full. So, and again, I don't think I need to worry about where the seam is on this one. I know some of the trees I've had to, but I think I can start it and end it wherever I want. I don't think it's going to, so right now I'm having a hard time even seeing, here's where I, here was my seam from before. So I'm having a hard time even seeing that. So I don't think it, that really matters on this one, which is nice. Um, I'm going to keep on working and I'll be back shortly. So here's what it looks like so far without a topper on it. I admit I really love how this one turned out. It was quite simple, so I do love that fact that it was the same trim that I just used over and over all the way up the tree, and it looks gorgeous. It's shabby, and it really kind of speaks winter to me. The one thing I don't like about this trim is that it sheds a lot, that even though I think that I have, you know, I ran my hand over it a few times, and it seems like I still get a couple pieces falling off, so I hope that this one doesn't um, long term doesn't kind of shed and fall apart but I guess only time will tell and so now um, the only thing I really have left to do on this one is to add a topper and again originally I was going to put this one on and I do like this as a topper but what I don't like about it on this particular tree is that this is very white and this is almost an off-white color and I don't like that so um, I was looking at what else I have on my desk left over from the other trees and even though I've done this one already before on um, one of the other trees I've done in this series I still have some of these gorgeous rhinestone snowflakes from my friend Kim at Angel Dreams Crafts Kim on Etsy and I'm going to use these they're so pretty and I think that they really make this tree look elegant once I'm going to glue them up at the top. So um, what I'm going to do for gluing these on the top again is I'm going to do a little bit of E6000 and then also hot glue. And so what I'm going to end up gluing is I'm just going to end up gluing just one of the little um, pieces that comes out of the snowflake, one of the little spokes. I'm not quite sure what the technical term is. And so I'm just going to put a little bit of E6000 just right in the middle of the snowflake. And then the rest of it going down, I'm going to do the hot glue. So the, the hope is that the E6000 will help kind of hold it long term a little bit. And then the hot glue is going to set it a little bit faster. And so I'm just going to glue that down right there. And I'll just hold it here for a minute till the hot glue has a chance to set. Which doesn't take very long. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go on this side and I'm going to try to line it up. And so that when you look at it, it just kind of looks like one. So I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Here's what it looks like so far. So I'm going to flip it over and do the back side. So I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm just going to take my E6000 and I'm just going to put a little bit of that in the middle of the snowflake. And then also at that tip right here, we'll put the hot glue. So that should hold it temporarily until that E6000 has a chance to dry all the way. And that's the other side. So um, again, I think this is going to be a gorgeous tree looking at it head on. So one last view of the tree up close. 
there's that gorgeous bling and you can see all of the fun little eyelash trim that I added to the tree. And in the end, you really couldn't see the base. So if you guys are following along and you have a similar tree and similar trim, I think you could probably go without adding any trim at the very base if you wanted to, because this is going to cover it up. But I do have to say that this definitely is a very wintry looking tree and I love how it looks. And I can't wait to show it to you guys straight on. Thank you again so much for watching today's episode along with the other episodes in this series. I really love how this final tree turned out and feel that this eyelash trim was perfect for creating a gorgeous winter tree with very little effort. I also love the final effect of the beautiful rhinestone bling that I placed on top. As much as I have loved creating this series and still have so many more trims and ideas and supplies that I would love to create with, I'm going to have to stop for now as I have other Christmas projects that I need to continue on with and I'm also pretty much out of paper mache cones. I'm hoping to be back again next year during the holiday season to create a few more of these trees. I want to wish everyone a happy holiday and until next time, I hope you guys all have a wonderful day and happy crafting.